I was asked to do a brief review of limits involving infinity, and so I'm going to look first at limits where x goes to either positive or negative infinity, as you can see in these two examples. Uh, and also, we'll talk about limits where we're heading towards uh, a particular value and there's a vertical asymptote there. But here we're looking at end behavior. Remember, whenever we are heading towards either uh, infinity or negative infinity on the x-axis, we're talking about end behavior. And we have this little chart that we've been using uh, for these rational functions where we only consider the leading coefficient because, um, or the leading term, because that is the end behavior model. So when I'm going to infinity, I'm really only worried about what's happening with 4x cubed over 4x squared. And essentially what we want to do is just imagine that we're putting a really big positive number in for x cubed, which is an even bigger positive number. So essentially, this thing is really big positive over another uh, really big positive because we're squaring that function. But if we just look at that um, end behavior model, uh, we can do more than this. We can actually look at what is 4x cubed divided by 4x squared. That thing is going to act like 4x. And when you put infinity into 4x, you get infinity. And so while this limit doesn't have a real number, we are going to characterize this limit as positive infinity. This thing takes off towards positive infinity. And we also know that there's no horizontal asymptote because of that. If this limit doesn't have a real number value, there's no horizontal asymptote. So we're going to play the same game when we send a function to negative infinity, right? We're going to look at that end behavior model. In other words, we're just looking at these first terms. And again, we'll reduce 4x cubed over x squared. This thing again acts like 4x. But remember, this time we're putting in a really big negative number. And so when you plug a really big negative number into 4x, you get a really big negative number. And so we're going to say that this, I can't squeeze it in there, that this uh, limit is negative infinity. Again, there's no horizontal asymptote because we're heading off to an infinity. But we don't want to just say that this thing doesn't exist. We want to describe where it's heading. And so for the first limit, you can see that everything's positive, so we're heading to positive infinity. And for the second limit, because we're plugging in a negative number, and this thing acts like 4x, 4 times a negative number is another negative number, and so this thing's heading to negative infinity. If you were to graph this function, you would see that on the far right side, it heads off towards positive infinity, toward the top of the graph. If you look at the far left side, you'll see that it's heading toward negative infinity, toward the bottom of the graph, toward the lower left corner. So that's how you analyze these functions where the top has a higher degree than the bottom. When the degree on top is higher than the degree on bottom, we know it's going to be an infinity. There's no asymptote. The limit doesn't exist. But we can describe the limit as either positive infinity or negative infinity if we examine what's happening with that end behavior model of those leading, co those leading terms. Okay, so hopefully that helps you clear up a little bit uh, about how to pick positive infinity or negative infinity. Let's see what happens when we have a vertical asymptote. So here's a limit uh, where x is approaching negative 4 of x plus 1 over x plus 4. Notice we are not talking about heading to infinity anymore. We're heading to negative 4. But when you do your substitution here, you get negative 4 plus 1 in the numerator, which is negative 3. And in the denominator, you get negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So this is an undefined value in the real numbers. What this means is we have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, at x equals negative 4. All right? There's a VA at x equals negative 4. So what we want to decide is if we can characterize what's happening here as either infinity or negative infinity. And so if we were graphing it, what we would say is if we graphed it and it approached that asymptote and it both sides headed to positive infinity, then we would say that this limit is infinity. If we graph that asymptote and both sides head to negative infinity, then we would say this is negative infinity. But if we graph the asymptote and one side's going to negative infinity and one side's going to positive infinity, we say does not exist. 
So we have to check the left and right hand limits. So I'll do the left hand limit in yellow. The way we indicate that we're doing the left hand limit is we put a little minus sign there uh, as a superscript on the negative four. And we're going to do this limit. Now, if you're looking at the graph, it would be easy to see which way this thing's going, but we're not looking at the graph. We're looking at this expression. And so what we're going to do is we're basically going to fudge it a little bit here. If I'm approaching negative 4 from the left, I'm going to imagine that I'm basically plugging in negative 4.1 into this function. And if I imagine that, I have negative 4.1 plus 1. That'd be about negative 3.1. In particular, I want to pay attention to the sign, which is negative. If I'm at negative 4.1, I plug it on the bottom, I'm going to be at negative 0 0.1. Because negative 4.1 plus 4 is negative 0 0.1. And so don't really worry about the numbers that are there, but notice that both the signs are negative. So we have a negative divided by a negative. And so that indicates to us that this limit from the left-hand side is actually going to be positive infinity because it's a negative divided by a negative. This is going to continue to grow without bound, and it's going to get closer and closer to, or higher and higher on the positive y-axis. So the left-hand limit is positive infinity. I'll do the right-hand limit in green. And what we're looking for is, do we get the same value? So the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right-hand side x plus 1 over x plus 4. This time we're going to put in a number that's a little bit bigger than negative 4. So how about something like negative 3.9? When I do negative 3.9 on the, in the numerator, remember I'm really close to negative 4, but not quite there. I'm going to get like a negative 2.9, which is negative. That's the point. When we're really close to negative 4, that numerator is still negative. But in the denominator, I'm going to get a, neg a positive, positive 0 0.1. So when I'm really close to 4, the denominator is negative when we're coming from, or positive when we're coming from the right. So what I'm trying to say here is that I end up with a numerator that's negative and a denominator that's positive. That turns into or implies that this limit is negative infinity. And because this limit is negative infinity and the yellow limit from the left was positive infinity, because those are different, we have this situation. And so this limit, the entire limit, is a DNE. does not exist. We've looked at the left. We've looked at the right. We've put a number in that's pretty close to negative 4. On the left, we ended up with negative over, over negative, so that was a positive infinity. On the right, we ended up with negative over positive, which is a negative infinity. Because those are different, I say DNE. If they had been the same, we could have said either positive or negative infinity, depending on which one showed up. But because they're different, we put DNE. And this little trick I did with these, these little decimal numbers here in blue, that's how you check the signs. Just pick a decimal number that's really close and do a little math with it to find out uh, which infinity you're dealing with. Okay, hopefully that will help uh, clear up a little bit more about the limits at infinity that we've been working on. Uh, this was supposed to be a brief reminder of what we've studied. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Take care.